Welcome to the International Cultural Exchange in the celebration of the Diamond Year of the United Nations. Please welcome your host, Mr. Silliman International 2019, Abhishek Prince Joshua of India. Hello Philippines and hello world. Welcome to the Diamond Year celebration of United Nations. We're all excited to be here. United Nations has done a lot for this world and it's especially in this time of crisis, they continue to contribute for a lot of progress. And we're really grateful. And at this juncture, I would like to welcome the lovely host, my co-host, Miss Suleiman International 2019 from Ghana, Leila Morton. It's so great to be here. Thank you, Prince, for that warm welcome. It's like coming out of a box for me. I'm so happy that we have been able to celebrate the Diamond Year of the United Nations through our annual International Cultural Exchange. It's great to see you, Leila. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here as well. We usually celebrate this in the month of February, but this year with all the changes that's happening and the crisis that's going on, we have moved it to October, but it is timely that it is the Diamond Year celebration of the United Nations, so it is not so bad that we are celebrating now. And I'm just really excited to see what the contestants are here to contribute. Yes, Prince, I completely agree. It is amazing how the international organization of Silliman is putting this together for us. We are just happy to be on stage today. So. Again, we welcome the Silliman Ice 2020 or the International Cultural Exchange and the celebration of the Diamond Year of the United Nations. Now let's hear the voices of our brothers and sisters from around the world, Silimanians from all over the globe. Let's listen to them. Hello, my name is Daryl Robinson and I am a second year counseling psychology major here at the Silliman University Graduate School. I hail from the United States, and in my country, we hold some international organizations to a high regard. This year, we recognize the United Nations as they are celebrating their 75th anniversary of existence. Since the creation of the United Nations after the Second World War, the United Nations has supported multiple nations throughout the world, whether it be humanitarian, relief for the impoverished, or just overall humanity. This year's theme for the United Nations is the future we want, the UN we need, reaffirming our collective commitment to multilateralism. So you may ask, what future do I want? Well, the future that I want is a world full of peace and harmony, a world that recognizes equality of all mankind. Yes, this year in 2020 has been a year full of despair and heartache as we are in the pandemic of COVID-19. But with our efforts of working together as one, we can do many things that will empower us to become better. And when we become better, the world succeeds. So please join me in solidarity to making the world a better place for everyone. Being an international student, it has taught me that not only am I not alone, but I have so many to call on, even during the saddest times. And if I can do that, you can do that. 
So please, let's do the right thing. Let's call on each other to help each other through this trying time. Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Vargas. I'm Peruvian and I'm a Cali instructor in Silliman University. Through this short video, I would like to express my most sincere regards to the whole international community. In that United Nations Day context, I want to emphasize how important it is shaping our future together. Because when our cultures are mixing, our mission becomes successful. All the best. Hello everyone. I am Suleiman Ibrahim, taking up Master of Public Health with concentration on epidemiology. This year, we are celebrating the United Nations Day my year with the theme, the future we want the United Nations we need to inform our collective commitment to multilateralism. In the past 75 years, the United Nations has a huge impact to the world from maintaining peace to promoting human rights. This year's pandemic has been a very challenging task for each country to handle. The theme is a perfect statement to encourage countries to set aside any political agenda and come together to work for a common goal. It should bring about more helping hands to each country and this year's celebration is a perfect time to make the bond stronger. The future that I want to is not only food on the table for each family but to have healthy as one of the top priorities of the United Nations, especially getting the vaccine for COVID-19. And thank you. So in this year's celebration of the United Nations, we talked about a future that we want and a future that we need. I would want a future where we could embrace humanity and strengthen equality, which is also a future I think that we need. We need each other. However, I believe that we first and foremost have to put our heart into our own actions because we all play an important role in order to live a multilateral life and to achieve a better future. Hello, my name is Shawane and I am half Australian and half Filipino. I was told today to talk about the United Nations 2020 theme of shaping our future. The first thing that comes to my mind when I hear this is racism. I would like to see in the future racism decline to the point where it's not really discussed within society. We see these problems in the United States and any and many other countries. For myself, I believe that racism shouldn't be within our society. As we see the world globalize, we will notice that many other countries will become more and more multicultural and as races mix we shouldn't have this deciding factor as as a problem within our societies I believe that racism shouldn't be a problem in the future I don't think that we should have racism within our society and when it comes to getting jobs or any other factors within our society it shouldn't be a problem. I firmly believe that as we express our own ethnic beliefs and our own ethnic how we are, that it shouldn't be a problem when you talk to other people. Because racism shouldn't be a problem. We should be expressing ourselves as we are, not how our race is. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tiarma. I'm proud of the celebration of UN 75th birthday. Hopefully, with the team of UN 2020, namely together to form peace, we become agents and pioneers of peace wherever we are. We are not enemy of others, but our enemy is a virus. Let us unite against the virus for the healing all of us and our hope in the future is 
the unity of the people to create justice, prosperity, and integrity of creation. Happy birthday, UN! United, we can! Hi everyone, I'm Mary from Indonesia. The United Nations 2020 theme reminds me of the future I want, that the world becomes a better place for all God's creation, that we live in peace and justice. And I'm sure that all of us need that future. So in this event, I wish Mr. and Ms. Silliman International can become the, mas the messengers and the ambassadors to promote the United Nations 2020 theme to the world, especially about friendship. So, let's be friends! That was truly beautiful. We are here to pay our gratitude to the United Nations for the 75 years of peace building for the nations. And we say thank you to 75 years of world peace and 75 years of care for the children through UNICEF and 75 years of preserving integrity and heritage of every nation. Thank you, United Nations, and congratulations. And the theme for this year's Diamond Year Celebrations of the United Nations. UN 2020, 2020 shaping, shaping our future together. together. It's time for us to know our Goodwill Ambassadors for our International Cultural Exchange. How was your experience as Mr. Suleiman International? Oh, definitely one of the best highlights of my Suleiman career. And, um, I'm, I'm quite a shy, I was quite shy, not so confident, but thank you, thank all the people in HiSaw who really boosted me and gave me the confidence and I'm just really honored that I was chosen to represent my country and my culture and that was truly a blessing for me. Later, tell me how was your experience coming to Suleiman and that was your first year and I think you joined Miss, uh, Miss, Miss Suleiman International and you won. Yes, the whole celebration was quite overwhelming. I thought it was going to be an easy ride in the park, but there was a lot of things that I learned from my experience. And it brought me closer together with different cultures. And I'm still friends with some of the people today, including you as well. And it's a beautiful experience to go through. So I applaud the people that are taking part in this year's Mr. and Miss Silliman International. Thank you, Leila. That was, I'm, I'm glad I met you there as well. <laughs> now it's time to introduce our successors. Our first Goodwill presenter is from Korea, Miss Mie Seo from the College of Nursing. My name is Mie Bi Seo, 19 years of age, taking a Bachelor of Science major in Nursing. I am now joining Mr. and Ms. Cinnamon International 2020, representing Korea. I would like to tell my countrymen that Cinnamon University has a high quality of education with friendly people around the campus. This year has been a tough year for us due to the pandemic, but I believe that, with solidarity, this crisis will soon be solved. Let us unite as one. And our next contestant, representing the country Tanzania, Joseph Mbilu from College of Engineering. Hello, I am Joseph Musafiri Mbilu, all the way from Tanzania, East Africa. I am 20 years old, born in the year 2000 on the 15th of May. Um, as you see, I have a cultural crowdfund call this Kitenge yeah, in Tanzania and I would like to explain a little bit about myself. I am really a person that really likes to interact with different kind of people. Uh, before coming here I live in different kind of places and I really like to share different type of culture and learn different kind of culture that people here from different places live and how people in, engage and interact with each other. And I came from Tanzania and I came all the way here. I really love the culture in the Philippines here. The people are so friendly and I really like, as I say, I really like to interact with people. And the way I really interacted with people here in, in the 
manager in Silliman. It's a really welcoming and really friendly place that I really cherish and I really thank God for bringing me here. Uh, what would I tell my countrymen about Silliman? Um, to my fellow countrymen in Tanzania, for real, it, it's from deep of my heart that Silliman is a really great place. I really love it here from the first day as I came here. We are really warmly welcome here. People are so welcoming everywhere. When you go to um, different places of the city, when you leave out Silliman itself. But when we talk about Silliman itself, we are really welcome in the international office. Uh, we went there and the office itself directs us and everything that we're supposed to do and it's really warmly welcoming and we really love it and cherish it. Siliman is a really great place that welcomes people from different countries. As you see, I am a Tanzanian but I really feel at home here because I feel um, I encounter different people from different places. We have different celebrations. Here in Silliman, like the ballad where different people from different places, alumni meet and interact with different people that you feel warmly and you feel very good. And I really thank God for bringing me here. And we have the international office in Silliman, which really welcomes us, um, it really directs us in different uh, places in Silliman, and it really gives us an opportunity to really engage in different activities and really not feel lonely as we from the, as we are from different type of places but we really we really feel like we are in our country as we are directed by the internet. Next we have a beauty from the United States student nurse Kyra Halterman Hi everyone my name is Kyra Halterman I am 20 years old from Grass Pass Oregon USA and for the international pageant this month, I will be representing, of course, my home country, USA. Now, tell you guys about myself, there honestly isn't that much to say. I am half American, half Filipino. I'm currently a level one nursing student at Silliman University College of Nursing and I'm just trying to survive this school year. Also, I like cloudy days over sunny days because it's not as hot. What I also miss is that right after it rains, especially if you're in the countryside, like or like maybe the park where, where there are pine trees, right after it rains, the smell of white pine trees, that's one major thing I really miss. I have tried to find a scented candle similar to that or something similar to that, but I've never been able to find it. So that is definitely one thing I miss. So one of the questions I was asked for this introduction was what would I tell my fellow countrymen about Seliman University? Well, for one, Seliman is over 100 years old and has actually seen World War II. So there is some history on campus. And also, Seliman is, is accredited by the US and they provide good quality education at a cheaper price than some colleges in the US. And Silliman is located in Domegedi City, which is also nicknamed the City of Gentle People. Our next contestant, also from the United States of America, biology major student, Dalton Glover. Hello, my name is Dalton Glova and I'm 21 years old and I'm currently a third year bio student in Silliman University. This year, I will be representing the United States in the Mr. and Miss International pageant. So, let's learn a thing or two about each other. Well, to start, I'm an avid reader, I absolutely love reading, it really takes up things off my mind and I learn a thing or two about life. I love to travel, traveling just gives me a lot of experiences and a lot of fun memories that I could live with for the rest of my life. And I also know how to play guitar. I'm so obsessed with music, from rap to hip hop to jazz to pop. I love all sorts of genres. Both my parents are Filipino, and my mom actually graduated from Silliman Nursing in 1987. I have a younger brother too, who is going to Silliman in the coming years. 
So a lot of people ask me why did I go to Silliman or why choose that college? And the first thing I tell them is that I solely did it out of the purpose of experience. Um, not only is Silliman University a really great college, it also offers a lot of things that could change your life. And for me, being there at 18 and staying there for three years, I've definitely learned a thing or two about life that I probably would have never learned anywhere besides Silliman and Dumaguete as a whole. Uh, the people there and the experiences I've had definitely have changed my life and taught me a thing or two about how the world really works and it's really humbled me to be there and to, to see a different environment and be friends with people from a different part of the world and to really expand my knowledge and how the world really works and as I said before I'm very adventurous so this is something I totally do. What would I tell my countrymen about Silliman University? Well, I actually get this question a lot from my former classmates who have been curious about my experiences in Silliman, and I usually end up telling them that it's a place where you can really, really get along with people. It's not hard to adjust there because the people in Dumaguete and Silliman overall are just very kind, very open-minded, very accommodating people, and they're very social beings, so it's not like hire by, it's more like, oh, how is your hometown, or how did you know about us? They're very social creatures and they, they learn and they're very respectful, very respectful people. And not only is the people that's amazing, it's the whole place itself. Silliman University has so many beautiful sites and beautiful tourist spots that you can go and visit and have a time of your life. And not only that, you'll experience so many things that you can only experience in the Philippines itself. And it's such a great country, such a great town like Dumaguete itself and they definitely will have a hard time trying to leave and it's going to be very memorable for them. And to end, I will be inviting you guys to the United Nations Diamond Year, which is an organization that was help, formed to help international relationships from countries around the world to make the world a better place. We have a Goodwill presenter from Nigeria, Abigail Ademola from the College of Nursing. Good day everyone, my name is Adamola Abigail Ayomide. I will be turning 20 years old this coming November. I am an indigenous of Oyo State. I'm from the Yoruba tribe. I can speak fluently in two languages, which are English and Yoruba language. And I am currently delving into the Philippines culture, Visaya language. I can only speak Gamai. But well, you know, there is always a room for an improvement. I have a lover in my life, which without him, my existence is meaningless. In him have I found my identity, and this lover of mine is Jesus Christ. In the tempest storms of my life and family, he has always kept us going with a watchword, which is found in Philippians 4 verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Through the help of my lover, I was able to achieve plenty in my prior years, such as graduating high schools with excelling grades in 2016, holding multiple officer roles in Baptist Association of Lagos West Baptist Conference for more than six years. With God's grace and glory, I was able to go through those experiences that all molded me to be the person I am today. Currently. I am a level 2 nursing student aspiring to be a medical surgeon with the ambition to make a difference and contribute to the world through the help of God. And I believe that those values that I have learned and adapted throughout those experiences, through the guidance and blessings of God, will make me all the more capable to reach my goal. I am a strong, versatile and goal-oriented woman always searching for opportunities to grow and add more values to myself to impact my world and represent my community and my country. And I believe that this pageant is an opportunity for me to represent my noble country, Nigeria, the giant of Africa. Silliman University is a university which consists of over 60 nationalities as students. The central goal of Adia Suleiman University is a Christian education of the highest quality. So Suleiman University education is not just centered on the classroom only, 
but rather it is centered on five C's which are classroom, church, cultural center, court, and community. Because each and every one of us here are ambassadors of our countries. Suleiman University is not just a place where you come to study the course of your choice, but it is a place where the future and fate of all nations are being shaped. Suleiman motto is Via Verita Vita, which means the way, the truth, and the life. Suleiman University is a place you would love to be, a campus by the sea, where individuals grow holistically. If you haven't known already, this October 24, 2020 is the 75th celebration of the United Nations Day with the team shaping our future together. This celebration will be full of fun because it is a special year. So I invite you all from all nations of the world, all races, all colors, that even in the space of this pandemic, to come together as one to celebrate our International Day of Peace with compassion, kindness, and hope to shape our future together. Thank you. And finally, we have a goodwill presenter from India. Will it be back-to-back -back win for India? Good luck to my countrymen. Biology student again, Malayaj Rai. Hello everyone, my name is Malich Rai and I'm from India. I was born in New Delhi to a Hindu family. Both my parents are in academics. My mom is in linguistics, particularly Hindi language, that is the national language of India, and my dad is in sciences. Growing up, both my mom and dad were working, so I had to figure out most of the things on my own. And I had a lot of time to myself, like while coming back from school, there was nobody in the house. So I had to find stuff to do, and that gave me a lot of time to develop hobbies. I sketch, I like to sing, I like to look up recipes online. I mess them up, they're not quite perfect, but they taste alright, so, I mean, they're edible. So, whatever works. I grew self-reliable, and that's a good trait, but there is a limit to how much self-reliable you should be and I crossed the point where I was uh, obnoxiously um, trusting of myself so that it hindered my abilities to work in a team. I was not able to trust anybody with my work but gradually I have learned to, to, to change. I have um, evolved a mentality where I can trust others with the work that I do, I can trust others with the things that I want help with. I'm not good, I'm not still good at asking for help, but I managed to sort of get by. Three years ago when I came to Silverman University, I wasn't sure if I'll be able to survive. I didn't know anybody and everything felt new. It was a strange land, but I was wrong. I found people that I could trust. I found people that I could talk to in tough times. I, I found people that I could share my happiness and sorrows with in, in just about a few weeks. Everything that I've experienced in Suleiman has been a growing experience. I have evolved, I have developed mentally, emotionally, physically, especially physically for the past couple of months because of quarantine, I've gained a lot of weight. But jokes aside, Silliman, for me, has been a platform for change, for courage to accept who I am and for courage to trust others with the things that I do, with the things that I want to do. Silliman has people from different cultures, different communities and different regions, different religions and all of us work together for a better future and that's why Someone has been a guiding light for me through the tough times. Oh wow, they're so brave for taking on this challenge of being the next Mr. and Miss Suleiman International. I applaud their bravery. Absolutely, they are brave to join this competition. It's not so easy. And I'm really glad they are doing so because they're representing their country, their culture, and they're educating us. And that's very important. 
in a diverse place like Suleiman. We congratulate them for representing their countries. Thank you guys for sharing your talents. And it's time for us to go around the world as we go to our first segment, the International Cultural Exchange called Pride of Place. The Goodwill presenters will bring us to their home country through this virtual presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome the Pride and Place segment. Hi everyone, my name is Kara Holterman and I am from Grants Pass, Oregon, USA and I'd like to give you a little tour of my hometown. Now unfortunately due to the pandemic and the fact that I'm in Cebu right now, I actually can't give you a live tour. So I created a video for my pride of place. I hope you enjoy! Grants Pass was founded in 1887 and named in honor of General Ulysses S. Grant's victory at the Siege of Vicksburg in Mississippi during the American Civil War. Grants Pass is located along the Rogue River in the Rogue Valley, surrounded by the Klamath Mountains. The mountains are a popular spot for hunting, camping, and other outdoor recreational activities. The Rogue River has a salmon run a few times a year. Obviously, during the salmon run, the rogue becomes a popular spot for salmon fishing. Outside the season, steelhead are often fished for. However, fishing isn't the only thing that the river has to offer. Hellgate Jet Boat Excursions is a popular stop for tourists from all around the world and labeled as the number one river trip in the Pacific Northwest. Hellgate runs excursions down the wild and scenic Rogue River through the Hellgate Canyon. Guests can take in the sights and sounds of the native wildlife as they glide inches above the water. The boat ride stops at the OK Corral, where the guests can ride a tractor from the riverside up to the restaurant. The OK Corral is a beautiful lodge with uninterrupted views of the river. After eating, the guests go back upriver, and this part is when the trip becomes wet and wild. The boats spin on the river, and the waves splash everyone with water. Honestly, it's really fun and welcoming, especially on a hot day. Although, do watch out for your electronics. Next, we have the Wildlife Images Rehabilitation and Education Center. The facility was created in 1981 to provide care and treatment of sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife. Since then, they have expanded to provide educational programs on wildlife conservation and the environment. They have a clinic, animal sanctuary, and educational center inside 24 acres of land. Animals treated here have included everything from baby squirrels and badgers to the American bald eagle, bears, cougars, and wolves. However, some animals cannot be released back into the wild whether it be due to age, an injury, or something else. So they usually end up becoming wildlife ambassadors for their species and help conservation and education. Thousands of people visit the center every year on educational tours, enhancing the knowledge of nature and wildlife preservation. The goal of Wildlife Images is to preserve and educate the public about the animals in Southern Oregon so they'll still be around for future generations. Next we have the second largest festival in Oregon, the Boatnik Festival. Boatnik is held by the Grants Pass Active Club every Memorial Day weekend along the Rogue River. All the funds raised during Boatnik are returned to the community by supporting local children and youth programs. The festival has so many activities to watch, including a sprinting and drag boat racing, a fireworks show, carnival rides, arts and crafts, a pizza eating contest, bingo, a golf tournament, and a parade through the downtown area. It is such a fun weekend in Grants Pass, a festival that I honestly, truly miss. Lastly, there is the Rotary Duck Derby. 
This is one of the biggest fundraisers in Grants Pass. Clubs from all around town come together to support the local community. People adopt a rubber duck in September and later in the month, the ducks are dumped into the river from one bridge and flow downstream to the next bridge. The first duck to reach the next bridge wins. The owner of the duck gets a prize and there are eight prizes to be won. And at the end, the ducks are retrieved from the river and don't harm the environment. Alrighty, those are some of the best things about Grants Pass. I hope you enjoyed the video. Honestly, I enjoyed making this because I reminisce in so many good memories. Now, you all take care. It is 2020 after all, and there is still a pandemic going on. So take care, stay safe, and I'll see you on the flip side. Hello, my name is Joseph Msafiri Mbilu. I am a Tanzanian, representing Tanzania in East Africa. Tanzania is a place with its population of 58 million people. And its capital city, Dodoma, located at the center of Tanzania. The main economic activities which are practiced in Tanzania is agriculture and tourism. The main crops that are, are that are cultivated in agriculture are maize and beans. But we do have tropical fruits like banana also. In tourism, we have different kind of game reserve and national parks and tall mountain that tourists are attracted to to come and visit in Tanzania. As of right now, I'm going to show you guys different places found in Tanzania that we are proud of that they are found in Tanzania. Please watch the video so that you may be inspired with the amazing things found in Tanzania. It is a country in East Africa within the African Great Lakes region. Over a hundred different languages are spoken in Tanzania, making it the most linguistically diverse country in East Africa. The country does not have a de jure official language, although the national language is Swahili. Approximately 10% of Tanzanians speak Swahili as a first language and up to 90% speak it as a second language. Of course, the following are the pride places that we have in Tanzania, but starting with number 10, the Serious Game Reserve. It's one of the biggest game reserves that we have in Tanzania and also in Africa in general. You see, we have different kind of animals that are found inside, together with different kind of plants and vegetation in general, which of course encourage tourists from around the world to come and see this amazing place. And also, of course, it brings up the growth of the economy of the country in general. And number nine, we have Ngorongoro Crater. It's one of the biggest crater in the world. It is caused due to the collapse of a volcanic mountain, one of the largest mountains that actually is supposed to be. And it collapsed, therefore it formed a, a crater where different animals live and there are different kind of water sources and different futuristic things that are found inside the crater. As we see, we see zebra and different kind of vegetation. And number eight, we have the Serengeti National Park. It's another national park that is found in Tanzania. It's one of the biggest actually in Tanzania with different kind of animals that migrate time to time. And number seven, we have Tarangire National Park. It's also one of the national parks found in Tanzania. Also contains different types of animals, different type of wild animals, as we see cheetah, we see elephants and zip. And number six, we have the Mafia Island. It's one of the islands. It's a small island. This island is a fascinating island that is really covered with coconut trees surrounding the whole island. Also, we see also the marine part of this island is very beautiful. And number five, we have Zanzibar. It's a big historical island that carries the biggest story of slave trade in Tanzania that was conducted in the slave trade era. Zanzibar has also very beautiful and attractive beaches. Also Zanzibar has different historical buildings that were built by the Portuguese colonizers 
back when they used to colonize Zanzibar. For number four, we have Unguja Island, also one of the historical islands on the side. For number three, we have Ruaha National Park. It's one of the biggest national parks in Tanzania, with the largest population of elephants found inside Ruaha National Park. It also contains its own river called Ruaha River and also helps in production of electricity by the name of Ruaha Dam. Number two we have Stone Town. Stone Town is a town found in Zanzibar. It's a very historical town that has very old historical buildings that were built back in the 18th and 17th century. Number one, we have Mount Kilimanjaro, the number one pride of Tanzania. It's the highest mountain in Tanzania, number one highest mountain in Africa, and one of the highest mountains, of course, in the world. and I was born in Seoul, South Korea. Let's have a quick tour to my hometown. Seoul is the capital city of South Korea, the largest and the busiest area. It has a population of 9.7 million people and form the heart of Seoul. People here usually get to their work by trains or subways. This is the fastest way of getting to their destination. Seoul has a lot of tourist attractions such as Namsan Tower. It is one of the most popular places known in Seoul. When you reach the top part of the tower, you can see the entire view of Seoul City. Gyeongbokgung Palace is the largest palace of Seoul's five grand palaces and it is an important site that can be seen as a royal palace of Joseon Dynasty. Tourists also enjoy the Korean street food. If you come visit, I'm pretty sure that you're going to like the Korean food as well, like tteokbokki, sundae, and omu. Lotte World Tower is the fifth tallest building in the world. The views are spectacular both day and night. So many entertainment can be found inside, like the aquarium, concert hall, cinema, and more. You can see that the place is full of people. Thank you for touring with me. I hope you had fun. Hello, my name is Dalton Glova from Quakertown, Pennsylvania, and I'm here in front of Memorial Park, a memorial dedicated to the World War I and World War II fighters from Quakertown, Pennsylvania. 
Originally settled by the religious society Quakers, Quakertown has always been a social hub since its founding. In 1777, the Liberty Bell was hidden here to hide from the British on its way to Allentown. And if you don't know, the Liberty Bell is an iconic symbol of independence of America and can be found in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania today. Today I'll be showing around my town and all the unique characteristics it has. Quakertown is well known for its extensive farmland. As you can see in the video, farmlands can stretch acres and acres. In Quakertown, we specialize in wheat and corn, and all of this is harvested and sold at our local farmer's market. Quakertown is also known for Lake Nakamixon. Offering more than 1,450 acres, at Lake Nakamixon, you can rent a boat, kayak, fish, swim, and do many more fun activities. Prom pictures are also set here for high school at Quakertown. As you make your way to downtown Quakertown, you'll find yourself passing by a train station. This Quakertown passenger freight station was built in 1902 and operated for 80 years. A fire destroyed this historic site in 1989, but was soon restored. It has now been transformed as a venue spot that can be rented for special occasions such as weddings. The hub of activities can be found just around Memorial Park. Here, you can find the library, The main park where you can play basketball and volleyball. And the public pool, open to anyone, but due to coronavirus, it's a different situation. The Quakertown Memorial Park also offers tennis courts. and baseball fields for those interested in baseball. Downtown Quakertown, also known as the Quakertown Borough, offers a lot of food, clothes, and services from local businesses from Quakertown. Some of these buildings here date back as early as the 19th century. And on top of the burrow, we have this beautiful mural here. And that's Quakertown, Pennsylvania for you. I hope you learned a thing or two about my hometown and really appreciate how awesome it is. Thank you. Good day everyone. In my dialect Yoruba, I would say Ekwo Juma Bogweneyo. My name is Adamola Abigail Hayomide and today I will be taking us on a journey to the place called Olumarok. Olumarok is a mountain in the southwestern Nigeria. It is located in the ancient city Abeokuta Urban State. The city Abeokuta got its name from this rock, Olumarok. History of the rock dates back to 19th century, the Oyo Empire, when Abeokuta was inhabited by the Egba people. The rock is an historical monument which served as a fortress and shelter for the Egba people in 1830 during the Intertribal Wars. I will be showing us the video of a documentary that was made about Olumarok, and in this video, we have a tour guide whose name is Adebayo Mudukbe. She will explain to us everything about Olumarok. I wish I could do that in person, but currently I am not in my country. I am here in the Philippines. So I think this documentary would better explain to us everything about Olumarok. Stay tuned. 
This is Abeokuta, the capital of Ogo State. It is known as the Gateway City. We are now here at Olumorok. I was born in the deep woods of a big forest and I was born You're welcome to Olumo Tourist Complex. Here is the foot of the rock. Olumo Rock from the base is 137 meters above the sea level. Abeokuta, the capital city of Ogun State, actually derived its name from this rock. Climbing this rock now is in two ways. Either you go by the panoramic view elevator or by the staircase. Whichever way you chose, we all get to the peak of the rock safely. I wish you a pleasant trip. Here is the first landing stage. When you are coming from the foot of the rock, through the staircase. This place you have climbed 225 steps. This is Lishabi Garden. It's named after one of our past warriors called Lishabi Agungwakala. Lishabi Agungwakala was a warrior in his lifetime. He was one of those warriors that fought for the Egbas to gain the freedom when they were under old oil empire. Two trees dominate this place that we can as well talk about. The first one is the flamboyant tree. That's it there. That's the producers of this long pot I'm holding. This long pot has some seeds inside. When it's dried up, if you tap it or shake it, it gives a kind of sound. Shake it, shake it, shake it. That's why it's called Pan Sheke in the Yoruba land. It serves as a natural music and rattles for children, nursing mothers, cultural dances to play with. Another one is Dungoyaru tree. English call its name. The botanical name is Azadiracta indica. The name is derived from one house of reeds, meaning tall boy, because of the virtue of its height. These are very common in the savannah land of northern Nigeria. The leaves are very medicinal. If you cook it as herbs and drink, it kills malaria. People come to this garden for relaxation, picnics, many by the parties, etc. When you go up there, we'll tour the rock around and visit all the historical places we have here. Wishing you a lovely trip. This is the main shrine of Oluma Rock. This is where we offer sacrifices to the deity of Oluma. Oluma Rock is an historical monument as well as a symbol of Egba unity. Because under this rock, Egba people took refuge during the intertribal wars. After the war, the rock has become a deity. That's why they worship this rock yearly. On the day of the festival, the sacrifice preceded by beating of traditional drums. At the same time, booming of guns by the hunters to let people know that the festival has begun. During that time, the paramount to love Egba land will pray here for the whole country and for the entire Egba people. Also for those climbing this rock so they will not fall. We've never had any casualty. They use a big black cow for the sacrifice. Also here, some traditional believers, they make their request. Maybe they're looking for wealth or for children. After their prayers have been answered, they will bring their pledges there, as in thanksgiving, to the God Almighty and to Olumo Rock, they interceded for them. That is why they refer to this rock as Olumo, Abelowo, Abelomo, Abeloro, meaning a deity that can pray through for wealth and for children. They only allow two people to enter this place, the chief priest and the paramount to love Fegba land, while others stay outside and say amen to their prayers. Let's move to the caves where they really heat during the intertravel wars. Over here, we have a Gba wartime hideout. This is where they really hit or took refuge during the intertravel wars. There was a time when Egba people were having oppressions and depressions from the ancient Oyo Empire. That time they were looking for independent. They decided to leave where they were residing then and settled down in this environment. That was in 1830. Not quite long they settled here. Another intertribe were cropped up between the Egbas and the Dahomey, now Republic of Bene. So they were looking for a place to hide. 
They consulted Ifa Oracle. Ifa said they should come and hide here. Somebody discovered this place. His name is Adagba. Adagba was a great hunter farmer. This place was a forest or jungle then. It was only the powerful people that could come here to do anything. But when he first said they should come and hide here, he now invited others to this place. And they were here for years. During that time, they constructed five good rooms that with mud for have collapsed. It remains only one there. You will see some holes on top of the rock inside the cave. That was where they grinds and pounds their food items. After the war, they consulted Ifa Oracle again, whether they should go back to where they came from. Ifa said, no, they should stay here. That this is where their sufferings and wanderings has ended. That is the meaning of Olumo. And Another meaning to Olumo, Olu means God in the Yoruba language. Mo means molded. Meaning God's molded. God benevolently molded this rock for a refuge. You will see it's an ideal place for someone to hide. When they were here, the enemies could not see them. When they were on top of the rock, they could see the enemies from afar. They would lay ambush and kill them. After the war, people asked them, You Egbers, where did you hide during the war? They said we hid under the rock. That is where the name Abeokuta originated from. Abeokuta means beneath the rock or under the rock. Let's walk in and have a feel of the cave. So these are the holes that they used to grind and pound their food items then. There wasn't anything like grinding machine or pounding machine. As they were grinding on top of this rock, the rock was getting deeper. This is the only room left out of five they constructed. This is one of the water pots they use then. It's made of clay, they call it Amu. This is Ojubo Baluai Shrine. The deity controlling smallpox and measles. It's also known as Shokmano, the deity of Kama. If anyone is attacked by that disease, you come to them here. They tell you what to do and you are killed. Here we have a cocoa tree. If a king has to be installed in a Yoruba land, they pluck the leaves away a cocoa to crown the king. Even for the chieftains and titles, they use it as well. But this particular one, they use it to crown a lackey of Egba land, the paramount ruler of Egba land. During the raining season or dry season, it doesn't wither evergreen. This is a baobab tree. The botanical name is Adonsonia digitata. They call it Igyoshe in the Yoruba land. Ausa call it Kuka. The leaves are very medicinal, very edible. They use it to cook me and cooker in the northern part of this country. You likely see this in the tropical areas. But this is a special one we have here. Some people make their prayers here if they don't want their enemies to triumph over them. Here are some sculptures, some artworks representing our past warriors those that fought for us during the war. The standing heads represent those that survived the war, while the buried heads represent those that didn't survive it. The cowries represent Ifa divination they consulted then, and the money they were spending then, Owo Eyo. This is the ancient route before the elevator was made. This is where the ancient settlers were using to get to the peak of the rock. It's a natural passage. People still take it, but it's a little bit challenging. Difficult for those that have phobia for height. Though it's very, very adventurous, but I tell you it's scary because we have some steps there. So in the alternative, we can use the staircase beside the lift that will take us to the peak of the rock. But if you know you are fit to go through the ancient route, Fasten your belt and buckle your shoes. Are we ready? Yes.
so this is the peak of the rock you can see people climbing and some are already there at the peak at the peak of this rock you can see several places of abel kuta you're welcome to the peak of the rock the highest point of oluma rock that's it here oluma rock from the base is 137 meters above the sea level as we are standing here we can see almost the old city. See the beautiful scenery of the Asian city, feel the lovely breeze. You will know God is awesome here. Yeah. As we are standing here, let's figure out some important places from the city, like the first church in Nigeria. That's it over there. Can you see the art structure with the green roof that has a steeple in front of it? Something like a tower after that mast. Can you see any structure painted ash with a green roof? that has a tower in front of it. That is St. Peter's Anglican Cathedral Church, Ake Abeokuta, the first church in Nigeria. It was built in 1842. We have tie and dye production place down there. Can you see where they spread those blue-black fabrics? That is tie and dye production place, Ijemo Idiaru. They have their indigos there. Look at this direction. You will see a long mast. That is NTA Ogbe, Nigeria Television Authority, Ogbe, Abeokuta, the first transmission station in Abeokuta. In front of it, you will see two structures painted lemon green. That is Old Baptist Boys High School, Okegunya, the school that a former president, President Olushegun Opasojo, attended and some other dignitaries in Nigeria. Look at this direction. You will see a coffee brown structure with the white stripes. That's the first mosque in Abeokuta, Central Mosque Committee. It was rebuilt in 1925. Look at this structure here, painted white with the white stripe, with the black stripes. That has a green roof. That is Shodeke Memorial Cenotaph, the man that embraced Christianity to the land. The first and the second service was held in that is compound by Freeman and Henry Townsend in 1842 and in 1843. We have Iroko tree here. It has been there for over 200 years. You know, it's a mystery to have a tree like this on top of the rock still flourishing. Some people make their prayers there for longevity, long life and prosperity. Look at this direction. You will see Ogun River. That is where the state, Ogun State, derived its name from. The river cuts across for Ogun State, namely Lagos, Oyo, Oshuanundo, through the Republic of Benin and burst into the Atlantic Ocean. Some people wanted to blast this rock from this point. As they were trying to blast it from this point, the rock got cracked over there. Pus and blood came out from this place, meaning it's a sacred place. You don't come and tamper with it. Another version to it, we used it to measure the altitude of this place. That is how we could get Oluma rock from the base. It's 137 meters above the sea level. And that is it, lovely people. We've come to the end of the journey to Olumorok. I hope you all enjoyed the documentary you just finished watching. And I know that surely most of you would want to visit Olumorok by now. It is a place everyone would love to visit. And I can tell you as well that the Abeokuta people are very friendly people. So at any time you wish to come to Olumorok, you are always welcome. Thank you so amazing to see all those beautiful places that our presenters have showed us it is so nice to see where they come from and the beauty of these places they come from so prince which part of india would you say is your favorite of them all that's quite tough and honestly i haven't visited half of india yet it's a huge <laughs> country but my favorite place is definitely my hometown it's old it's unique has all the food you want. It's a food haven. And it's historic as well. So my hometown. I invite everyone to come visit my hometown one day. Now it is time to enjoy a musical number from our sisters in the elementary school representing Germany. Please a round of applause for the beautiful sisters Sarah Doring and Saskia Doring.
Thank you for that meaningful number, Sarah and Saskia. That was wonderful. And indeed, we're all praying for the world to heal soon so we can go back to our normal lives. Thank you. From that gift of talent from Germany, we move on to the talent portion of our international cultural exchange. Please help us welcome the K-pop performance by our Miss Korea, Mie Seo. Miss Korea, that was a dazzling performance. Now let's welcome Mr. Tanzania for his talent presentation. Uh. 
applause and a shout for Mr. Tanzania. That was an amazing performance and it definitely brought me back to home in Ghana. I was experiencing secondhand excitement from his performance and I was also dancing in the background, just following his steps and feeling the energy from his performance. So now we welcome Miss USA. For my talent, I will be playing All of Me by John Legend on my electric guitar.
Thank you, Miss USA. That was a wonderful performance. And now it's your turn, Mr. USA. Hello, my name is Dalton Glova. I'm from the United States, and my talent is playing music on the laptop. Let me show you what I mean. So here we have FL Studio, which is a beat making program, and a lot of high profile producers use it, such as DJ Mustard, Metro Boomin, Avicii, and so on. So here I already made a beat for you guys, and just to save the time. So we're gonna go through the sounds that I've used in this program. So here we have the kick, the clap, the hat, a snare, and the loop. So we have these loops here. And I've chosen this loop because I feel like it's, you know, I like the sound of it. It's a dark vibe. And our final sound is the 808s. So here we have about, what, five, six sounds. And throughout the program, you have all these sounds and you have to make a little melodies and rhythms from it. And all you do is compose it and stack it up and see how it sounds. So here, I have this whole track ready for you guys. I'm going to go over it. So let's play it. So there's the loop. Then we have the 808 kick. Then we have the clap. Then there's a snare. And we have the hi-hats. That's a really complicated process and the reason why I do this is because I love music and well, I have a lot of passion for making music too, so. Alright, I guys, I hope you guys enjoyed what my talent was. Uh, I find it really unique. And you know, a lot of people in the United States really love hip hop, so thank you. Peace. Mr. USA, that was a wonderful performance. And I remember last year, during my talent portion, I was clueless of what to do. Then I decided to cook, and it somehow went well, and I won the talent portion. That was, that was interesting. And next up, with an interesting talent, let us welcome Miss Nigeria to give her talent portion. Hey everyone, my name is Adamola Abigail Hayomide, and once again, I am representing my country, Nigeria. Today, the cultural talent that I will be showing to Ross Hall is how to tie gele. The tying of gele is an aesthetic and skillful hat. And I must admit that a gele that is skillfully tied evokes a certain kind of beauty that can only be found amongst the African women. Not everyone knows how to tie gele. It is not easy. It requires a lot of skill. In Africa, whenever we want to tie gele, we use ashoke. But over here, I don't have ashoke. What I have here is Ankara fabrics. So I'll be making use of these different fabrics to tie my gilly. So go along with me as I show you how we tie a gilly in Africa. Yeah, yeah, you are my African queen. Ooh, Lord, ooh, Lord. Just like the sun lights up the earth, it lights up my life. The only one I ever see with a smile so bright And just yesterday You came around my way You changed my horse in a way With your astonishing beauty Oh, you couldn't make a brother sing No ordinary thing, a supernatural being And no, you are brighter than the moon Brighter than the star, I love you just the way you are And you are my African queen A girl of 
of my dreams You take me where I've never been You make my heart go ding a ling a ling Boy, you are my African queen The girl of my dreams And you remind me of a thing And that is the African beauty Stand as one, they are standing one mm -hmm. I look into your eyes Girl, what I see is paradise Hey, you captivated my soul Now every day I want you more I cannot deny this feeling I'm feeling inside Hey, no one I cannot take your place You cannot take your space That is a fact I cannot erase And no You are the one that makes me smile Make me float like a boat upon the night Girl, you are my African queen The girl of my dreams You take me where I've never been You make my heart go ding a ling a ling yeah. You are my African queen The girl of my dreams And you remind me of a thing And that is the African beauty Yes, I know mm -hmm. You are my African queen And I know See, I know See, I know what I am feeling In my heart and in my soul Oh, I know that it's this love And I know that this love Was surely sent from up above Cause you're the only one that I think of You are my African queen And I know that it means that You're the only one that I will serve I'll give you my heart, my love My body and my money Every other thing you think of In a man Who could think of anything better than you Who could think of ever hurting you Sacrifice my all, I'll give it all to you You are my African queen For real You are my African queen The girl of my dream The girl of my dream Where I've never been Oh, na la yeah. Oh, la la You are my African queen I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you I love you, I love you, I love you Oh yeah, my African queen, I love you Yeah, yeah, you are my African queen Like the sun, lights up the earth, it lights up my life But the only one I ever see with a smile so bright And just yesterday, you came around my way You changed my horse in a way, with your astonishing beauty Oh, you couldn't make a brother sing, no ordinary thing, a supernatural being And no You are brighter than the moon, brighter than the star I love you just the way you are And you are my African queen Thank you so much Miss Nigeria for that beautiful talent display I can only remember last year when I was participating in the pageant And I actually sang a Nigerian song by the singer Simi It is one of my favorite songs to perform And my all-time favorites And also... Um, I was wondering, will Mr. India give us a back-to-back -back win? I'm kind of looking forward to his performance. And so, we welcome Mr. India.
hope you guys enjoyed the culture-based talent presentation. That was absolutely beautiful. These people have put in a lot of effort into showcasing their culture through their talents. And thank you so much. Thank you all the contestants for taking your time to present your talent. We really enjoyed it. We thank everybody for participating and coming to view today's pageant. We are so excited of the results and I am so grateful to have a authentic insights to the cultures and experiences of our participants today. So now it's time to introduce our judges. I'm sure it's going to be a tough one to choose from all the amazing performers for today. And so now our judges are the president of the International Student Organization here in Silliman University, Higala International President from Canada, Mr. Keenan Brown. We also have here the reigning Miss Silliman 2019 and 2020, Miss Alexandra Twale. She is now a freshman in the College of Business Administration. And the chairperson of the Board of Judges is our former director for strategic partnership here in Silliman, and now a senior officer and press and cultural referent of the Austrian Embassy, Dr. Jenny Lynn Elmako. Now, let us proceed to the Goodwill Ambassador Personality Search through a special question and answer moment with Miss Suleiman Alexandra Twale. You in Korea? Oh no, I am in the Philippines right now. Oh, okay, in in Dubai. Yeah. I am in Valencia right now. Oh, I see. I see. You're living yeah. alone, or no? I'm living with my aunt because my parents are in Korea right now. I see. I see. And yeah. you've been okay and well and healthy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. That's good to hear. So, um, are you ready to answer your question? Uh, yes. I am. Right. So, I'm gonna read your question twice. And okay. then you can go ahead and give us your answer. Okay. All right. Okay. So your question is, how can, how do you think we can achieve togetherness in the middle of a pandemic? How do you think we can achieve togetherness in the middle of a pandemic? Okay, well, so <clears throat> thank you for the question. And um, I think we have to unite even if it's pandemic and we cannot meet personally, but it's good, I think, to gather online like this Zoom meeting or Google Meet so that we can unite and try to uh, conquer the con pandemic together. Right, right. All right. I loved your answer. It was very direct to the point. Oh, thank and you very calm and very pretty while doing it as well i love your skin <laughs> thank you so much um you know what they say about korean skin you guys is it true that you guys just have naturally good skin or do you have like the 10 step korean skincare everyone talks about oh i think that depends on the person but for me i think it's because of the weather maybe right okay okay yeah. so the weather in the Philippines, but it's hot. Has it not like affected your skin routine or anything? Um, no, not really. <laughs> right, right. Okay, okay I can see. Yeah. You. you look very glowing and everything. Oh my god, thank you. Right, you're welcome. You're welcome. So your question, Joseph, yeah. is. What are you most proud of that your country has achieved during this pandemic? Again, what are you most proud of that your country has achieved during this pandemic? Oh yeah, okay. Um, like it's a miracle, like so to say, because like it's unbelievable because my country, Tanzania, right? Um, it's in Eastern Africa, but mm -hmm. Uh, our president decided, like, when the pandemic started going in, our president decided to 
to go into a prayer like the whole country if you, whatever like you're a muslim when you're a christian a buddhist just pray whatever you can right and it really happened like there's no corona at all there's no death there's no nothing there's no corona in my country so i could say it's a really big achievement like everything is going on and everybody's living their life happy you know people can go for their job and get food people are able to live their life the normal life that actually some other country couldn't afford it you know so i'm really happy for my country to have you know that that's a big goal so yeah i could say it's a big achievement right right wow when you when you said all of that i got goosebumps because that situation is so far from what we have here in Dubagata and exactly. so good for your country do you have family and friends there oh, yeah I got, I got a relative there and my dad also flew like back um a few months ago but mm -hmm. coming back here it's kind of hard for my dad coming back you know because in manila right. it's not allowed to come in there it's a little oh, bit so he's too much still in manila yeah Oh, okay. All right. But it's really good that your country is in a much better state. And I do agree. It, it's something to be proud of and a big achievement. Exactly. So, Joseph, that was your question for tonight. Uh, okay. That ends the Q&A. You did great. Braces and all. So, congratulations. So, Kyra, is that is that right? Is the pronunciation okay? Yeah. Kyra, right? Yeah. All right. So, Kyra, I'm going to read your question twice, and then you can proceed to answering. Uh, don't worry about the stutter. All, all that matters is what you're going to say, and you can take your time. Okay. I know you're going to do great. Thank you. So, your question is, what is something people are finding important in the middle of the pandemic? that in your opinion is not that important. And in the middle of this pandemic, what do you think is the most important thing? I'll read it again. What is something people are finding important in the middle of the pandemic that in your opinion is not that important? And in the middle of this pandemic, what do you think is the most important thing? Hmm. Uh, that is uh, that is a little bit like that is something that that I'll have to think about. Um, but um, I'll um, is it all right if I start out with with what I think is is like um, wait the second part was uh, what uh, what do I think is the most important during the pandemic, right? Okay, so um, mm -hmm. I, I think I think the most important thing of the pandemic is 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 actually washing our hands because before the pandemic, um, ob uh, obviously, you know, people, people, like there are people c complaining about other people not washing their hands, and uh, and oftentimes, you know, uh, like like after something, we don't think about it, we don't wash our hands, and it's just it's just something we naturally do, and we don't we don't think twice about it. If you wash your hands, or we don't wash our hands, we don't think about it. But now during the pandemic, it shows just how much wa washing our hands is so important because it helps it helps us preventing, um, it helps prevent us from getting sick, whether it's it's the coronavirus, the flu, or any or any anything really, because now we're realizing that um, it, sh it really should be in our heads to wash our hands and not just something, oh, I'll be fine, I, I don't have to wash my hands. And um, the other, right. Now the, the thing that the um, that people they, uh, I'm sorry um, the thing that it's all right, it's all right. the thing that people uh, think is important that I don't find it really important is um, okay, that I have to I have to have, I have to think about that one um, personally take your time okay. Uh, Personally, I think probably um, the, the thing that people are, f are finding important that I don't really find important is 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 traveling just for leisure. Because uh, now right. that it's the pandemic, you're hearing of so many people like wanting to travel because it's on their bucket list, or because of this, or because of that. Now, 
traveling for school or for work that i see as important but traveling just for whatever like just traveling for souvenirs or for the experience right. that i don't see as really important right i agree i agree especially uh about the traveling part you know um airlines are dropping their prices just so people just to entice people to travel you know because no one's really traveling anymore and yet, like you said, it is dangerous and it is not that important. I do agree. So Kyra, that was that was your question for tonight. Uh, that, that concludes the end of your Mr. and Ms. Silliman International Q&A. You did great, you did great. And your response was really super substantial. I loved it. All right. So your question is, if you could be president of your country for a day tomorrow, what would you do? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, if I was president for a day in my country, well, okay, make this uh, pretty political. Uh, right now, in my opinion, you know, with uh, Donald Trump in office, I feel like he hasn't had the, the job as a president for um, unifying the United States. Um, I feel like, you know, in my 20 years living here, um, he's pretty much divided the country, like, so much. Um, I've never seen a more political America in years. Like, it's very left and right sided. And I feel like uh, he's just putting his own propaganda for his own party to make it, like, very extreme and he's not really agreeing with you know the other side of the political spectrum and he's making it for the his his right side to hate the left side of the spectrum so even on common issues like racial equality and um, you know economic crises and you know black lives matter he's really uh hasn't really done a good job in unifying the country which is what a leader is supposed to do such as the president which is one of the biggest you know jobs in, in america is to, is to keep the country together because you know we live in a very progressive society where people have a lot of new ideas and you know america really loves their freedom and you know everyone has their own different values but you know it comes to down to like what what do we want as a country and he just brings it on his own opinion to uh you know let his party be like the the right wing, the, the, the superior, and he, you know, he calls uh, even Joe Biden the opposing uh, party member, like, you know, he's wicked, you know, people are calling him a pedophile, and like, as myself, even though I don't like Donald Trump, I don't agree that he's a racist, because he doesn't explicitly, like, you know, do things that are racist or say things that are racist, I just think that's like, too extreme, you know, I don't even support him, but I'm not going to be out here telling people, like, oh, he's a racist, I just think, like, you know, he's probably done some good stuff that I don't even know he's doing, but actually I'm getting too far into like what he's doing. But as a president, yeah, I would definitely uh, unify the country, um, you know, try to put America together and, you know, solve solve problems in it as much in, in any way as possible instead of like in a political way. Because when it comes to politics, it just becomes uh, one-sided, you know? But if you talk in a human perspective, it's, it's what's morally right for society, for all of humanity, um, you know? You have to work together hand in hand with people and you know craft ideas that everyone shares and everyone could view as right and you know and in, in, in line with each other not like oh it's it's right sided it's left sided we should do that like, no you have to do it in a way where everyone can agree with each other regardless of like you know left and right and you know um, definitely uh, work on international affairs because uh, I feel like globalization and um, helping uh, countries as a whole is has to do with uh, also the objective of unifying the world mm -hmm. but uh, yeah I would definitely still have a stance in a, a self-sufficient country so it's kind of both it, it works both ways um, having a self-sustaining country while helping others being kind of interdependent uh, and yeah that's, that's my answer to the question right right that was a very thorough answer I appreciate it you did a good job and yeah, on I just, such I just hard notice <laughs> Oh, okay. Leave yeah. it even better. <laughs> How has High Saw been doing? Uh, High Saw's been doing great. You know, um, uh, during a time where uh, everyone is uh, at home in their own country during a crisis like this, um, it, it's good to just be at home and, you know, re reflect on family and, 
mm-hmm. and the importance of it because you know it's, it's dark times you know like this things like this never happen we'll never probably see like a pandemic like this in years because right the technology we have but you know like i'm home right now i'm i'm in quarantine and uh you know i miss the philippines like i miss the food i miss like my friends there but you know um it's, it's a blessing to be at, at least home you know because some people are stuck where they are so mm-hmm. um yeah it's definitely it's definitely uh as high saw like we kind of i wish we were like you know back as a group because i love my like friends like overseas uh-huh. um, but for high saw it's definitely been, it's, it's kind of hard because like we, you know as a as a high saw group we really work to, to, together as a team like high saw is like a team it's like it's really right, right. fine with other other countries that's how we operate that's how we work like uh-huh. like everyone's like you know bouncing off like new cultural ideas with each other Right, I agree. High Soul was easily one of the most interesting orgs in Silliman. Yeah, it's it's very very different. It's 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 structured in a way where you really have to pay attention to everybody. It's not like mm-hmm. one person stands out. Right, right. So, but it's good to hear that you guys have been doing well even in the midst of a pandemic. Yeah, and like we actually are doing this right now. Like you and me face to face, we're we're talking right, about like, right. uh-huh. yeah, internationally. Yeah. Right. So, uh, uh, the the high soul question wasn't part of the Q and A anymore. Uh. It was just the present question, and you did well. So I'm just about to end the recording right now. So, um, Abigail, what we're going to do today is I'm going to read to you your question twice, and you can go ahead and give us your answer. Okay, ma'am. All right. And then um, basically that's all you have to do today. Best of luck. I know you're going to do good. Uh, you already look great. So I'm going to do a really good answer. Thank you. So Abigail, are you ready for your question? Yeah. <laughs> yes, right. I'm ready. So Abigail, your question is, if given the chance in the middle of this pandemic, would you rather time travel to the past or to the future? Okay, let me read it again. If given the chance in the middle of this pandemic, would you rather time travel to the past or to the future? Okay, thank you for that question. It's a great question. If I am given a chance in this pandemic, I would rather prefer to time travel to the past, to the future rather. Because if I'm able to go to the future, I can actually see what we can do to eradicate this pandemic on time because currently everyone is trying scientists are trying their best to make sure that a vaccine is being made and still yet we have nothing for now and you know it's gonna take a long process before the vaccine will be made so if i if i'm given the chance i would rather prefer to go into the future to see what could be done and to be able to save us from this current tragedy and to be able to reduce the cost of everything that this pandemic has cost us so life will be made easier so i prefer going into the future right thank you for your answer you're a very well-spoken woman i love it so are you ready i guess yeah i'm ready all right so all right uh how do i pronounce your name again uh, it's Malayaj. Malayaj, is that right? Yeah, but you can call me Rai. That's easier to say. Oh, okay. Okay, Rai. So, I'm going to read your question now. Yeah, sure. So, Rai, if you could describe hope to a blind person, how would you? Again, if you could describe hope to a blind person, how would you? Um, hope is, it's subjective, so everyone has a different opinion about hope, but I feel like hope is something that gives you courage when, like, there, there's nothing left for you to hang on to. Hope is, like, something non-materialistic that you can hold on to. So, it's like, even, it, like, blind person, they, they can't see, but hope is not actually a material thing. So, mm-hmm. you can you can actually hold on to it. Something that gives you courage would be hope for me. Uh, I would describe it as that. 
Right, right. All right, so uh, that was your question. Thank you so much for your answer. I loved your answer. It was very direct to the point. Uh, Ikaw, I hope you've been staying hopeful even amidst the pandemic. Are you in Dumaguete too? Yeah, I'm in the dorm. In, in, in Silliman? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Silliman. Oh, so you haven't been able to uh, go home? No, no, I wasn't able to go home. How's that going for you? Well, so far I'm being busy with classes, a lot of exams, and I'm in my final year. Uh huh. So thesis, OGT exams, like a lot of things going on. So I don't have time to like worry about stuff. <laughs> oh well, it's midterm week for you as well. Yeah, I don't know what's midterm week because we have exams the whole semester. I had exams last week, and it was a major exam. And this week we have another exam. My teacher has right, no right. Right. What was your course again? Biology. BS Biology. Oh, biology. Uh, in what year? I'm in fourth year. Oh, so you're you're graduating, yeah? Hopefully, yeah. Right. Oh, so best of luck. Um, I hope you stay safe and stay healthy. Good job with answering your question. It was so nice talking to you. Congratulations to all our contestants that the, their answers were extremely intelligent and great insights. This will be definitely beneficial. Thank you. That was an exhilarating experience to watch everyone as they performed. You can be amazing, you can turn a phrase into a weapon or a drug. You can be the outcast, you can be the backlash of somebody's lack of love. Or you can start speaking up. Nothing's gonna hurt you the way the words do when they settle neath your skin. Kept on the inside with no sunlight, sometimes shadow winds. But I wonder what would happen if you say what you wanna say and let the words fall out. Honestly, I wanna see you be brave. What you wanna say and let the words fall out. Honestly, I wanna see you be brave. Wanna see you? I just wanna see you. Everybody's been there, everybody's been stared down by the enemy. Don't seem disappearing, disappearing, bow down to the mighty. But don't run, stop holding your tongue. Maybe there's a way out of this cage where you live. Maybe one of these days you can let the light in. Show me. you want to say and let the words fall out honestly i want to see you be brave what you want to say and let the words fall out honestly i want to see you be brave and since your history of silence won't do you any good did you think you would let your words be anything but empty? Why don't you tell him the truth and just say what you want to say and let the words fall out? Honestly, I want to see you be brave. What you want to say and let the words fall out?
It's time for our special awards of Mr. and Miss International 2020. I'm really excited to see all the contestants and I'm really excited to see the winners. So wherever you are in the world, please give your biggest round of applause because it's not easy to win these awards. It takes a lot of hard work and it should have taken a lot more hard work now that's all virtual and online. Leila. We thank everybody who participated in bringing this together. There's a lot of hard work, as Prince said, that comes into making this work. And since it is virtual, we still expect your cheers and your smiles and your excitement through the screen because we will feel it. So we welcome the special award recipients for 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the 2020 Mr. and Miss International Special Awards. The Special Awards will be presented by Rona V. Maghinay and Althea Nasha Ginaldo from the Luz Auditorium Corps of Ushers. Miss Professionalism. Best in Formal Attire <music> Mr. Congeniality Best in National Costume <music> Cultural Ambassador Best in Cultural Presentation Best in Talent Miss Global Speaker We now come to the final part of the 2020 International Cultural Exchange in celebration of the Diamond Deer of the United Nations We will now see our outgoing King and Queen in their farewell walk Please welcome the Silliman International 2019 from Ghana, Leila Morton. Mr. Silliman International 2019, Abhishek Prince Joshua from India.
once again, the Silliman International 2019, Lena Morton and Mr. Interna Silliman International 2019, Abhishek Prince Joshua. Mr. Silliman International 2020 is... And the new Miss Silliman International 2020 is... I believe 